YouTube channel and this is the lecture 4 of PLL series. In this lecture we will see small second analysis of type 1, type 2, type 3 PLLs and four phase step, frequency step and the frequency step. This is the first topic which we will cover and in second topic we will see the frequency acquisition range. Okay, so let's first discuss the topic first. So I'm removing this second. So in the first topic, what we are going to do, uh, we will give some change in input phase and we will check the phase error that it is uh, getting constant, getting zero or not. Okay, if the phase error is zero or constant, okay, then our PLL will be lock, otherwise it will be unlock. Okay, so let's start it. Yeah. So initially I'm considering that PLL is locked. Okay, at equal to zero. Let at equal to zero, PLL is locked. What it means? It means that uh, phi in equal to phi out equal to zero, or I mean difference of phi in equal to sorry phi in minus phi out equal to zero, or it is constant. Okay, so we can say phi dt equal to zero. Okay, and phi omega in equal to omega out so these two are the cases okay so what i told you that uh, we will give at t equal to zero the pll is locked and what we will do at t equal to zero plus we will give some change in input like uh, we can give some step change or frequency step change we can give or frequency ramp change we can give or phase step we can give okay and after that we will at uh, infinity time up, we will give rise to the PLL up to infinity time and we will check the phase error. The phase error is getting constant or not. Okay. So that is uh, that we will do. Okay. So before doing that, first calculate the phase error, the transfer function of phase error. So see phase error s is equal to phi in s minus phi out s. Okay. Or phi in s. What is phi out? We can write it LGS by this LGS is the gain of this open loop gain okay 1 plus lgs because it's in negative feedback okay and dot phi in s right because we know that the transfer function phi in equal to lgs 1 plus lgs lgs is open loop transfer function okay so that phi out will remain here this phi in will go in multiplication now take the phi in cons outside so it will become phi error s equal to phi in into 1 minus lg s by 1 plus lg s or phi in equal into uh, this will be 1 by 1 plus lg s okay so what is phi error phi error is equal to 1 by 1 plus lg s into phi in s okay yeah so let's take case one case one is uh, we are giving phase step in input okay so that is del phi in equal to okay so this is step change in phase input okay so that we are giving at input since we are doing everything in uh, S domain, so take it like this, do it uh, Laplace transform and it will be this. Okay. So now what we have to check, we have to check phi error at the infinity time. So limit t tends to infinity phi error t or we can say in S domain 0 as phi error t. Okay. So it will be limit S tends to 0 S into so we saw that the uh, phi error is this much okay and what is lgs lgs is equal to that closed loop open loop uh, gain okay so that was uh, lfs kbc of is okay and the kpd also kpd is from this phase detector okay so it will be kpd lfs kvc by s okay so let's write it this is uh, 1 divided by 1 plus kpd kvco by s dot lfs 
into delta phi in s 0 phi s see phi in s so we will put it here in place of phi in s so this will be cancelled out so what is uh, phi error t now limit t tends to infinity it is equal to limit s tends to 0 1 divided by 1 plus kpd kvco lfs divided by s and there is delta phi in 0 okay let's go to the next page okay let's write again that equation so the equation which we got limit t tends to infinity phase error t equal to limit s tends to 0 and this is s and s plus kpd kvco lfs you can see this now lfs is uh, the uh, transfer function of the your low pass filter so we know that uh, type of your pll can depend on it it can vary it can be type 1 type 2 type 3 okay if it is type 1 that time lfs equal to 1 by 1 plus s tau 1 and if it is type 2 then lfs is equal to 1 plus s and s tau as you can see p you can say i okay and if it is type 3 then it will be 1 plus s tau p s square tau you can say okay so now for now in case one we can consider that pll is uh, type one okay or, yeah it is type one we are considering so phi error t limit t tends to infinity it is limit s tends to zero so it is s s plus kbd kvco and what is for uh, type one it is one by one plus s tau one so put it uh, s equal to 0 so this 0 this will become 0 this will make it infinity this is 0 and this is 0 so it will be 0 only okay and second if it is type 2 pll then then phi error p limit p tends to infinity will be equal to limit s tends to 0 0 0 because ss is there i put it uh, 0 and then kpd kvc o and into 1 plus 0 divided by 0 so it will be infinity again and this will be 0 only okay now let's check for uh, this is case 1 okay now for case 3 case 3 sorry case 2 case 2 we have to take we are giving a frequency step change at input okay frequency step means uh, delta omega in is equal to delta omega in zero dot ut okay if we uh, we have to convert into it into the phase so the phase it will be integration ut dt right now let's take uh, laplace transform if it it will become s k okay now let's write that equation of phase error okay so that will be sorry this will be limit s tends to 0 s into uh, 1 by 1 plus uh, this is uh, or you can say s s kpd kvco lfs and into by this this both will be cancelled out okay so now case one when pll is uh, type one what will happen so it will be limit s tends to zero and this will be del omega in zero divided by this is zero plus this is uh, kpd dot kvco dot lfs what is the value of lfs this one by one plus s tau one one by one plus s tau one okay 
so let's uh, put it equal to zero so this is zero and it will become one by one okay and so it will become del omega in by uh, kpd kbco dot one so this is constant since this is constant so this is constant so PLL is log okay and now do for type 2 PLL is type 2 for this case uh, limit p tends to infinity and phi error p is equal to del omega in 0 divided by 0 where its limit as tends to 0 okay mm, this is plus kpd kvco and what is lfs lfs is s tau 1 1 plus s tau 1 okay let me write properly next line okay so it is equal to limit s tends to 0 and this is uh, del omega in 0 divided by 0 plus kpd kvco dot 1 plus s tau i divided by s tau p okay so when you will put it equal to zero so this will become infinity and uh, this is some value so constant by infinity is zero so this is zero so pll is constant okay now case three so this is case three <clears throat> in case three if uh, del omega in t is equal to del omega in 0 t this is our input the change in input means we are giving a ram frequency ram okay so what will be del phi in t we have to change it into phase so it will become integration 0 t or we can say when we will do laplace transform it will become del omega in 0 s cube so now let's check uh, the phase error okay so it will be to limit s tends to 0 s and this is uh, 1 divided by no s sorry this is s s plus kpd kvco dot lfs into del omega in 0 by s cube okay so these two will be cancelled out and this will remain s only okay or we can say um, like this we can say limit s tends to 0 and it is uh, 1 divided by sorry del omega in 0 this is s square plus s and uh, mm, this is uh, kpd kvco lfs okay now for type 1 what will happen for type 1 okay so if i'm putting uh, this can we can remove right Let's keep it uh, inside because we will vary this LFS and then we can see that what will happen. This will be cancel out this S or not. Okay. So for now, let's remove this because S is equal to zero. So type one. So we have to take LF equal to LFS equal to uh, that is uh, one plus S tau one. We can take okay. So let's write the limit S tends to zero. Del omega in zero divided by S KPD KVCO dot one by one plus S tau one okay so if uh, s is equal to zero okay what it will become it will become zero only so this will become zero okay after putting this s and this will also become zero so this overall will become infinity so what we got in this case that phase error is equal to zero at uh, limit t tends to infinity sorry infinity we got no infinity so what it tells it tells pll is unlock pll is not locked right so the condition of locking is not satisfied in this case okay so now case 2 in case 2 let's take a uh, type uh, 2 pll okay in this case lfs will be equal to 1 plus s tau i s tau p okay now let's put it in equation so limit s tends to uh, 0 into s okay let's remove this 
and uh, this was okay let's remove this also there was del omega let's keep this value only okay i mean this del omega and this was s k b d k b c o into 1 plus s tau y by s tau p okay this will cancel out this and this will become zero so this will be zero only so the phi error t limit t tends to infinity is equal to del omega divided by kbd kbco okay divide by tau p so this is constant so since it is constant so pl is log okay now take case type 3 also we can do all this uh, uh, verification that pl is locking or not by taking type 3 pll also so for type 3 pll okay this lfs is 1 plus s tau p1 1 plus s tau p2 and s square tau i1 tau i2 okay so phi error s okay phi error s means at in steady state what is the phi error that we want to check so it will be limit s tends to zero and uh, the equation was del omega in zero divided by s and uh, there was uh, kbd kvco and dot uh, lfs 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 that was the equation okay so in place of lfs we can write this uh, uh, value that uh, mm, okay and divided by this is s square tau i1 tau i2 this will cancel this thing okay when i will put it equal to zero so this will become zero this will become zero so and this will also become zero so zero zero means this will become equal to infinity and since infinity is there so this all will become zero so phi error s is equal to zero okay so let's make a table now so in this table so what we have done we have d1 phase step change at input okay that is first column and the second was uh, frequency step we, we give this is second column and the third was frequency rank okay and we have checked uh, the steady state phase error value for different type of PLL that was type 1 PLL, type 2 PLL, and type 3 PLL. For type 1, we got phase error when phase step we have given that time we observed 0, in frequency step we observed a constant value that was KPD. KBCO. you can see okay mm. Mm -hmm. where i have did this thing mm. so type one frequency step yeah see this is constant right so that value only i mentioned so when i gave frequency ramp that time i got infinity okay this indicates pll is unlocked In case of type 2, we got 0, 0, KPD, KVCO, tau. And for this type 3, we got 0, 0. So see, this type 1 is not good since there is infinity. The steady state phase error is infinity, means PLL is allowed. So type 1 is not good. So let's see, we will choose type 2 or type 3. Okay. So that was about uh, the uh, stability of the, uh, the locking. Uh, of PLL with uh, giving a uh, phase step, frequency step, and frequency ramp at input uh, and checking the uh, steady state phase error with the uh, type 1 PLL, type 2 PLL, and type 3 PLL. And so, this is all our conclusion. Uh, okay, and now the next uh, topic, the second topic, and the last topic is uh, for this lecture, obviously, that is uh, frequency acquisition range for PLL. Okay. So here we will focus at actual transient signal in PLL when we have any phase or frequency step. Okay. So now let t equal to zero. 
omega in equal to omega 0 omega free is not equal to omega 0 for v c equal to 0 so what it means it means pll is unknown why because see omega in you have omega out and uh, the omega out will be omega free only okay at uh, v c equal to 0 right and see this uh, free is not equal to omega out so omega out is not equal to omega in so means pll is uh, unlocked and there is some frequency error okay so now if i am plotting uh, omega out with respect to t how it will achieve its uh, target frequency i mean this omega out will reach to its target frequency with respect to time okay so initially your omega out have some frequency that is free running frequency because of the vco okay when your vc equal to zero and after that your vc no more will be zero and it will start to go towards it uh, it's a uh, target frequency okay so how it will achieve it so firstly it will have some frequency increase and decrease output frequency will increase and decrease like this okay and then there will be a bump like this and then it will achieve it its target frequency okay so there are three regions one is this and one is this so this is your target frequency in which your pll is locked where your pll is able to crack your input frequency so this first region is called uh, cycle slipping okay so this is what you are seeing you are seeing change in frequency there is increase and decrease in the frequency and the second region this is the first region this is the second region this is called linear settling at of output frequency linear settling of output frequency okay and in this case where your pll achieved the target frequency and it is locked okay so this is the reason where pll achieved the target frequency and here pll is able to track the input frequency okay what is the meaning of track the input frequency if you are giving any change in input frequency it will the output frequency would be able to track it okay and now the question is why this uh, up and downs we are seeing okay in this cycle slipping so to explain this you know omega out it is equal to omega free plus kvco dot vc okay let me erase this stuff yeah so we know the block diagram this is uh, v error then there is lfs and then this is vc vco this is omega out and then this will get feedback and uh, this is uh, a file or omega in you can say phi out okay this is vc so why in omega out we are observing such type of change in frequency up and down in frequency see if there is some up and downs in frequency some ripples in output frequency these ripples can be present in your output frequency only if some ripples are there on vc because this omega out is depending on vc only right so if vc have ripple then only omega out can have ripple okay and since this vc this vc is the filter version of v error so we can say that this v error also have some ripples okay and what is the v error v error is equal to half cos phi error okay so why v error have some ripples so v error can have such peak and trough only if phi error changes by 2 pi okay so i hope this is clear if you have any doubt you can ask me I will try to answer it okay so now i want to discuss about the acquisition range okay that is acqui acquisition range okay so acquisition range are of three types one is uh, hold-in range and uh, second is the lock-in range and third is uh, pull-in range so what is holding range so if i'm drawing omega out with respect to omega in so if i'm giving any if it is here and i'm giving any change this is omega out okay this is the free learning frequency okay so if i'm giving any change at input here 
this output frequency is able to track it okay if i'm giving this change so it is able to track it okay if i'm giving change again it is able to track again i'm giving change able to track 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 like this it is able to track it okay same in the in this direction okay so it is able to track All right so pll is locked in this case and a point will come at which it won't be no more able to track it so it is like this okay it is like this so see your omega in is increasing here but your omega out is not increasing now it is not increasing right so your pll is unlocked okay so see if i'm increasing omega in so what is the condition of locking omega in should be equal to omega out so if i'm increasing omega in by some amount delta omega then your omega out also should be increased with delta omega now then only your pll can be locked right so if it is increasing and it is not increasing as per this omega in then your pll won't be a lock anymore okay so up to this you can see that your pll is able to track this uh, omega in very well so this range up to which it is able to track this is called hold in range hope it is clear and what is lock in range this is the range the range of frequency over which the pll can acquire log without cycle slip cycle slipping what is cycle slipping cycle slipping is exceeding 2 pi okay what we can say without uh, without uh, phase error exceeding 2 pi okay see if you are increasing your omega in so your phi out also should be increased by the same amount means your phase error will increase with some amount right if you are increasing omega in means omega phi in you are increasing if your phi out is increasing means phi out is increasing okay so means there is some phase error means how is your phase error increasing it is increasing constantly or what what is happening okay so if your pll is acquiring lock without cycle slipping means phase error it is phase error is not exceeding 2 pi this is 2 pi and it is able to lock here only below this 2 pi okay then it is lock in range okay and in second case what is the pull in range if your pll is uh, if your pll acquire lock with or without cycle slipping if it is lock here or here that is called pull in range so what is it what it is telling that your pull in range delta omega p is greater than delta omega in so it have more range that pull in okay because it is including both phase error exceeding 2 pi or without phase error exceeding 2 pi and with phase error exceeding 2 pi so your pull in range means uh, del omega p is greater than equal to lock in range and your uh, del omega hold in range is greater than all of these three okay so i hope this is clear to all of you and uh, so what we have covered today we have covered uh, uh, the first topic was uh, checking the locking of pll after giving some input change okay that input change can be a uh, phase step input frequency step input or it could be a frequency ramp okay and with different type of pll we were checking that our steady state phase error is uh, constant or zero or what so if it is zero or constant the steady state phase error then the PLL is locked otherwise PLL is not locked that was the first topic and in second topic we understood the holding range locking range and the pulling range okay i hope you all like this lecture and uh, if you have any doubt you can text me i will try to reply it and in next lecture we will go in more deep okay we will see some mathematical expression for uh, this uh, for this uh, some mathematical expression we will see and we will see how this is coming okay that also we will see so that's all for today thanks a lot bye